Hi everyone, welcome to this presentation on 360 degree beam steering antenna based on substrate integrated frequency selective structure. This work is presented by Xing Feng, Halim Butayev, Fayez Hijazi, Wen Yao Zai, David Wessel, and Wen Tong. I am Halim Butayev, and this work has been done at Huawei Technology Canada, and presently I am professor at University of Quebec on Ottawa. This is the outline of the presentation. After an introduction, I will talk about some observation we can do of nature. I will present the objectives, the drawbacks of conventional phased planar phased array, frequency selective structure, substrate integrated waveguide switch. I will present the previous design for 180 degree beam steering and the new design for 360 degree beam steering. And also present some improvement we can do for 180 degree beam steering and then we will have the conclusion. Huawei Ottawa is located at Canada North, and this is Canada North is uh, Canada's largest technology park. Can Huawei Ottawa is about 300 employees and mostly in research and development. This shows some examples of research pursued in antennas at Huawei uh, Ottawa. We work on millimeter wave phased array for 5G. We developed some smart antennas based on waveguide integrated frequency selective structures. We work on base station antennas, antennas for WN access points, and also we work on other subjects such as OAM and other subjects. We can do some observation of nature. For example, when we look to the human eyes, it's very complex. There was liquid and many complex uh, aspects. Uh, we can note that the human eyes is never planar like traditional phase there is. It has a circular or spherical shape. And we can not notice also that human uh, body use very low voltage, about 20 to 50 millivolts. When we look to the fly, it has about thousands of receptors. And this allow, this allow the fly to have almost 360 degree view of the board. The fly can distinguish polarized lights and we humans cannot. The objective is to use a circular array with frequency selective uh, surface uh, to overcome the limitation or drawback of planar phased arrays, such as limited angular range, high cost, high loss, etc. This shows some example of product used, for example, by Ericsson, Samsung, or Qualcomm in, uh, in, at, uh, in military, military wave frequencies. When you look, for example, to the Ericsson product here, we can see the antenna part is take a small space, but because of the, all the control, the, over, the overall uh, size of the structure is, uh, is bigger. So the objective is to use so I show here for 180 degree, but also we develop the 360 degree version that we are going to present today. And the application is for IAB, so integrated access and backhaul, and also for radars. This shows the drawbacks of conventional planar phased array. This is a, pl a planar phased array, and uh, by changing the phase, we can direct a beam a different direction. So this, this, uh, this work has been presented by Jack Sefiri uh, from Keysight. So from his uh, simulation, we can see here, this is the maximum gain we obtain when we, uh, at, a norm, at normal direction. And then when, when we start to steer the beam, uh, for example, here at 50 degree, we start having high side lobes and the gain decrease. And here, close to 60 degree, we have uh, starting to have grating lobes. So the gain is not the same when we steer the beam and the gain decreases a lot. At 30, de 30 degree, the gain is already 3 dB less than the, max uh, the maximum gain. So one idea to, to resolve this issue is to use several phased array as it is spread down here. But this increases the cost a lot. So frequency selective surfaces are very well known. They were used in the beginning in military for military application. Uh, they are used in the microwave oven. 
Uh, this is a very well-known book by Ben A. Monk on frequency selective surfaces. And I myself work on cylindrical frequency selective surface. So the idea is to make a, an integrated version of the frequency selective surface, and we ca can call it frequency selective structure. In this uh, structure, we have a parallel plate waveguide here, and uh, we have here some vias, vias that are connected, like this one connected to a pin diode, and uh, controlled with the DC voltage, and then we have here a stop. So this element is called the frequency selective structure, and it is in, in the design that we are, we are doing, it is equivalent to uh, an LC, LC uh, resonator. So there is an inductance an that uh, the, the VIA uh, uh, play a role in the inductance, and also the connection here is part of the inductance. And the capacitance of the diode when it is off uh, is what it, it makes the resonance with the inductance. So we can use the off capacitance of the diode to have a resonance. This shows a, a switch that we have done by using this principle, and we use here three pin diodes, and this is a, 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 a substrate integrated waveguide. So, and uh, by changing the state of the diode, in off state we have a good transmission, and in on state we have no transmission. This shows some analysis by playing to the, this, this uh, part here, which play a role in the inductance, actually. We can change it here to have a better transmission, uh, less radiation, actually. And uh, uh, so there is different way to, uh, to, to, um, to optimize the transmission of the structure. And the switch was fabricated, and uh, this, is sh this shows a measurement. Uh, we use the Macom uh, pin diode uh, with this reference and this shows a measurement so the red one is the reference with the microstrip the green one is a transmission when the diode are in off state and that one that curve is when the diode is in on state by using this uh, structure we developed a beam steering antenna for 180 degree beam steering and uh, this work has been presented in this at this conference, and also we have a patent uh, related to, to the, this antenna. This shows some details about the antennas. We have a wave connectors here for vertical and horizontal polarization. So we have two polarization, and uh, this is the DC connectors. We have here transition from, from the radial waveguide to uh, radiating elements. And for radiating elements, we have a two polarization. So we have, for the horizontal polarization, we have printed dipoles. And for vertical polarization, we have modified uh, EFA antennas. And uh, this shows one element of frequency selective structure. And this one is excitation from the center. This shows some result of the 180 degree beam steering. This is at zero degree and this one at 90 degree we can see the gain doesn't almost doesn't change and uh, we can also steer at small angles but uh, if we want to steer in the elevation then we can stack many of this uh, pcb in, uh, in the vertical direction and uh, with one element we can have about the gain about 30 to 40 dB, and by using uh, several of them, we can uh, reach 22 to 23 dB gain. This shows the prototype, and this shows the multi-layer, the six-layer copper layer that has been used to design the PCB. This shows the uh, fabricated prototype with one element and with several ones stacked. This is a return loss, so it's matched about around 28 gigahertz. This is the measurement we have done for the radiation pattern. This is the radiation pattern at normal duration and then when we steer the beam. 
So now I'm going to present a new version. So for 360 degree beam steering, uh, we have to do a lot of change because it's not straightforward. So we worked on three approaches. The first approach is to use reconfigurable waveguide. And the second approach is to excite from the center with the several spaces for the connector. So in that approach here, we will have some holes where we can put the connectors. And in this approach here, we will have a waveguide all around here and uh, we can open some uh, 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 some place where we want the field uh, to propagate. And in, actually in that version, the hole is in the middle. So this is where we can put the connector. So approach, approach A needs three key technologies. Uh, there is uh, the inner reconfigurable electronic band back gap gate, so inside the waveguide, and the side uh, EBG that is on the side of the waveguide, and they are both combined to make reconfigurable waveguide, and we have a fix, fixed VS uh, all around the structure, and this helps to have a, a better distribution of the field in the radiating elements. This shows one uh, example of radiation of pattern obtained with this uh, approach. In the second approach, we made holes, like uh, as we see here in the PCB, and this helped us to put the RF connector, as we can see here. And from that, we can excite from the center uh, a reconfigured waveguide. And we also use uh, Mendel lined uh, microstrip lines that as we see here. So this shows the other side, we have a microcontroller. So here in approach B we can see the main rate microstrip line that is here. The radial waveguide to microstrip transition you see here. So we have all of them all around here. And uh, we have the hole in the PCB, and this is a pin diode. The structure was optimized and simulated with HFSS. And this shows some example of gain that we obtain in the frequency band of 20 GHz and the return loss. And here is me shot, and this is radiation pattern uh, from 26.5 GHz to 29.5 GHz. So in order to make the, the, the structure, we need to optimize the uh, Mandarin microsupplies. We need them to, 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 to have the same phase. And uh, we make them like this to have to, in order to be able to have the holes in the PCB. And this shows uh, the, optimize, the, the, the result for the, for the bandit lines. So they have the same phase and give the same amplitude of uh, the Transmission, transmission coefficient and they also need to have low coupling this shows some examples of um, uh, states for the diodes in order to, to get to be able to have the different uh, beam direction This, this is a zoom about showing the structure with the pin diodes and this is a modified frequency selective structure in, in, instead of having only one via we have two vias this actually increase the uh, reflectivity of one frequency selective structure this shows some details about where we have to we need to put the all the, the DC lines uh, underneath, so inside the material layer structures. This show when we have to we stack we stack several of them in the vertical direction in order to 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 increase again and also to to be able to beam steer in elevation. And we use the this uh, waveguide power divider. Uh, so this is the details about the power divider, and this show how we have the transition from the power divider. To the microstrip line, and 
this photo of the prototype and we are presently working on the, the measurement. So by using some ideas that we developed for the 360 degree, we can also improve the 180 degree beam steering antenna. For example, here we have 183 diodes. We can decrease the number of diodes by using transition from the regular guide to micro lines and uh, this helps to decrease about 50% the number of diets and we have the same performance in terms of, of, of gain and uh, beam steering ability and the angle step too so in conclusion we have presented the design, design method for 360 degree millimeter wave beam steering antenna with integrated frequency selective structure we use uh, collocated dual polarized radiating elements a new frequency selective structure and we uh, do analysis and experimental validation so thank you very much